Welcome to another episode of Bone Talks. Today we'll be discussing a broken thigh bone, also known as a femur fracture. This video is for educational purposes only, so watching is not a substitute for seeing a doctor, and if you're concerned about a medical condition, call your doctor or 911. We are not responsible for delays or damages in care. This is not medical advice. It's for education only. So what is a broken thigh bone? Well, your thigh bone is the biggest bone in your body, so it usually takes a lot of force to break. This means that doctors typically see this injury after a high-speed car accident or from the less common encounter with a recently escaped rhino from the Bronx Zoo. Before going further, it helps to review the anatomy of our leg. On the left is a normal leg, and then you see the bones underneath the skin. Here's our thigh bone, also known as the femur. On closer look at the femur, you can see that it joins up with the pelvis right here to form the hip joint, and at the bottom it joins up with your shin bone to form the knee joint. Now, it can break anywhere along the bone, however today we are looking specifically at breaks in the center of the bone, also known as the femoral shaft. Breaks near the hip or the knee are more complicated and are discussed in separate talks. Okay, so how is a thigh bone that's broken diagnosed? Patients are usually seen in the emergency room after a big accident and are reporting significant thigh pain, although it's not uncommon for people to be unconscious when they come into the emergency room because of other injuries sustained during this big accident. When patients that are unconscious are unable to direct doctors to the site of injury, it's important for doctors to inspect both arms and legs to look for injury. If they see a leg that's bent out of position or a very swollen leg, then they are suspicious for an injury to this leg and will order an x-ray, which is great for showing the bone and therefore diagnosing any fractures. They will also x-ray the hip and the knee when they see a broken thigh bone because they're looking for other injuries. About 5% of femoral shaft fractures also have a broken hip, although 25% of these hip fractures are missed because everyone is so focused on the very dramatic looking femoral shaft fracture. Treatment, unfortunately, almost always requires surgery because you have big thigh muscles, the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quads, which are all pulling the bone fragments out of position, causing malalignment. The bones need to be realigned to gain normal leg function, and the bones are realigned with surgery. The goal of surgery is to make sure that the bone is straight and then very stable so that it has time to heal. Until surgery is performed, the leg is usually placed into traction, which pulls the leg straight, preventing any abnormal bending of the bone from kinking the arteries and nerves that travel through the leg. Traction will also help to relieve some pain. There are two common types of surgery. Both use stainless steel or titanium metal to give support to the bro broken bone as it heals. The more popular technique currently is to use a titanium rod, also called an intramedullary nail, that goes down the center of the bone, which is called the medullary canal. With this surgery, a small incision is made over the hip, a small hole is made in the top of the femur bone, and then a nail is threaded down the center of the bone using x-rays as a guide to make sure that everything looks well aligned. The other option is to use a plate and screws placed along the side of the bone. Though it was more popular in the 20th century, it still has many uses today, especially when the bone is broken into many pieces or the break is very close to the knee or hip joint along the shaft. The disadvantage is that the incision is often longer and people usually have to wait longer before putting weight onto the injured leg. But overall, the bone should heal in 90% of cases when it's properly realigned. If it's very smashed, then it sometimes does not fully heal and needs a second, second surgery to place new bone called bone graft to stimulate healing. Patients will frequently complain of some leg weakness after the injury, most likely because of the damage to the quad muscle during the injury. Although physical therapy can help with the strength, it may never completely return to normal. The good news is that the risk for infection is very low overall, less than 1% of cases. Thank you for listening to another episode of Bone Talks. For more information, go to our website, bonetalks.com, or email us with questions at contact at bonetalks.com. Thanks again.